Hello and welcome to Dog Day Chess. About a year ago, I researched and studied a variety of elementary endgames. For example, king and pawn versus king, and uh, king and queen versus king with an advanced pawn. And I discovered something that surprised me. I discovered that for many endgame scenarios, a very small change in the initial position can result in a drastically different outcome. For example, something as subtle as whether an advanced pawn is a knight pawn or a bishop pawn can mean the difference between a win and a draw. This reminded me of chaos theory. Not that I know much about chaos theory, but I know that it involves the study of systems that behave in such a way that small changes in initial conditions can have drastically different outcomes. This is popularly referred to as the butterfly effect, which is a theoretical example that describes how the formation of a hurricane is contingent on whether or not a distant butterfly had flapped its wings several weeks earlier. Uh, anyway, I thought it would be interesting to look at some endgame scenarios that demonstrate this behavior. The first few scenarios are very obvious examples of this behavior. They involve a king trying to catch a passed pawn. In this position, if it's black's turn to move, the black king will be able to catch the pawn and the game will be drawn. However, if we go back to the same starting position and make one small but significant change to the initial conditions, namely whose turn it is to move, the white pawn will not be intercepted in time and white will win the game. Similarly, if we go back again, still giving the move to white but placing the black king just one square closer to the pawn, then of course the pawn will be captured and the game will be drawn. The next few scenarios also involve king and pawn versus king, but in these examples the defending king is trying to block the pawn rather than catch it. In this position, if it's white's turn to move, the black king will be able to prevent the promotion and draw the game. The key here is that black has the opposition, and black will be able to keep the opposition, even while being pushed back until they hit the wall and the game is drawn. If we go back to the same starting position and instead give the move to black, then this small but important change to the initial conditions will give white the opposition and will allow white to win the game. Here white reaches a key position and as we've seen in a couple of earlier episodes the one called Opposition Draw and the one called Elementary Queen Checkmate, White will be able to safely promote the pawn. However, this key position is winning for White only if the pawn is not a rook pawn. If we shift our pieces just one file over to the right, Black will be able to stop the promotion and draw the game. The last few scenarios I want to look at involve a queen battling a 7th rank pawn. Here we have white trying to promote the central pawn in order to save the game. However, with proper play, black will be able to capture that pawn and win the game. Black can achieve this by using forks to repeatedly force the king to e8, where it blocks the pawn's promotion. Every time the white king slides back to e8, the black king moves one square closer to the pawn. Finally, when the black king is close enough, the white pawn can safely be captured and black can win the game. Okay, so now let's go back to our starting position and shift the pieces just one file to the right. Again, this small change to the initial conditions will result in a very different outcome. When I was studying these scenarios, I was very surprised to find out that although such positions can be winning for black if the advanced pawn is a central pawn, they're not winning for black if the pawn is a bishop pawn. And the reason for this is that when the queen forks the king and the bishop pawn, the king doesn't have to go back to the promotion square to defend the pawn. In fact, the king doesn't have to defend the pawn at all. It can just move to the corner, and if the queen captures the pawn, it'll be stalemate. Consequently, since the white king never needs to block the promotion square, the threat of promotion always exists and the queen must continually check the white king in order to prevent the promotion from happening. And this leaves the black king no time to come closer to the action and as a result the game will be drawn. 
Let's go back to our starting position again. We saw that with a central pawn, black can win, and with a bishop pawn, white can draw. But what if we nudge our pieces one more file to the right? What effect will this change in the initial conditions have on our outcome? Well, once again, the outcome will be very different from the outcome we had with the bishop pawn. The knight pawn scenario is similar to the central pawn scenario, and black can use the same technique to win the game. And finally, let's shift our pieces over just one more file. Again, the outcome changes. White will be able to draw this game. The only way to force the white king onto the promotion square is to place the queen on the g-file, but this does not allow the black king to come closer. Notice that while the queen is on the g-file, the white king cannot move, and moving the black king closer would result in a stalemate. Therefore, we have a situation similar to the one that we had with the bishop pawn, the threat of either promotion or stalemate is ever-present, and it prevents black from making any progress. This game will be drawn. However, not all such rook-pawn scenarios are drawn. If we make one more subtle change to the initial conditions, namely move the black king just one square closer, black will be able to win this game. The reason for this is that if the black king is within two moves of g6 or f7, the black pieces can be maneuvered into a winning position while the pawn is allowed to promote. In this position, black threatens queen to e8 mate, and only a white queen sacrifice can prevent that mate from happening. With the white queen gone, black will easily win. So we've just seen several examples of elementary endgames. Of course, the primary objective of this channel is for you and me to improve our chess, which is why I describe the winning and drawing techniques to use for each scenario. Uh, nevertheless, I do think it's amazing how such subtle changes in a position can mean the difference between a win and a draw, and I thought it was worth highlighting that aspect of chess. This is why end games require so much precision. As always, I hope you learned something from this episode, and thanks for watching.